YouTubers. So it's been a week since my last garden video, so I thought I would do another walkthrough of all the changes that's occurred just in a week. As you can see, the deck is a little wet today. We got some rain overnight, which is great. Don't have to water today. But uh, let's see the changes. I've been very impressed with everything that's happening. So again, we've got our carrots. They are just, they look awesome. <laughs> They're just really pretty to look at. I don't know how big and how long they'll get in there, but again, as I said in my last video, I mean, this has all been an experiment to see what will grow and what won't. And so far, everything except for those brandywine tomatoes are thriving. But look at the corn. In just one week, we have got silk. We've got ears coming up. Tops busted through pollination like crazy. I've had bumblebees and honeybees and solitaire bees up here doing their job. And it's just been amazing. These stalks are so thick and sturdy. I'm very impressed that we have not needed to tie them or anything. We've got some a little bigger others. This little corn. She's just taking a little bit longer, but that just means we'll have corn after these other ones stop producing. And we've got, of course, our jalapenos. Brussels sprouts are still trying to hang in there. I don't know if they're actually going to produce this year, but after them being eaten up by the bugs so bad, I'm surprised they survived it all. So I'll just let them do whatever they're going to do and We'll figure it out next year. These are our gourds. These are the ones that you can actually turn into a loofah, which is exactly what I plan to do. But you've got the vine climbing up the side of the deck here. I'll look over the side. This one's not vining out as big as my large bottle gourds, but it's still, it's doing its thing. Of course, jalapenos, bell peppers, this is our one brandy wine that is hanging on. I am babying that thing like crazy because it will be our biggest tomatoes if it does take off. And there's nothing like huge tomato sliced with a little salt on it. You know what I'm talking about. This is all of our lettuce. Remember last time I had just planted it and nothing had come up yet? Well, they have busted the top. All looking very good in there. Then we've got our Roma tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, Matina tomatoes. As you see, we had to put a string alongside here, but it's gotten a little slack. We're going to tighten it up tonight to pull some of these back because the tomatoes were already toppling over. But we're going to secure those to the side of the deck here later, give them a little more support. Here we've got our yellow squash. Now the funny thing with this squash is the squash took off the fastest. Look down inside here. You'll see a nice one there. Small but pretty. They all took off the fastest and they all got fruit and vegetables on there the fastest. But it looks like we have a zucchini plant. We're going to actually be able to pick a zucchini today. Once it took off, it surpassed these yellow squash. That's a bell pepper here. Looking good. We've got little buds. And again our tomatoes, some more yellow summer squash. So we've got lots in there. Look at all those. We've got our beans, our garden beans, which by the way I was finally able to pick enough of these that I had it as a side dish with dinner last night. Just sauteed with a little butter and garlic in a saucepan and it was amazing. Love being able to eat right from the garden. Got our sweet peppers here. They are looking awesome. And then here is our large bottle gourds. And I'll, of course I'll show you a picture from the bottom, but look at this little guy. He just looks so cool, but got a ton of them on here. And then I was doing some research on the bottle gourds because I thought we'd be able to make the birdhouses this fall. But apparently, 
They take several months to dry, so it probably won't be until March of April of next year before we'll be crafting with them, but still. Very cool. We'll just, we plan on leaving them on the vine to dry during the winter and early spring. And then we will have lots of gourds to create whatever we want next year. It should be fun. Fun for the kids. A cucumber. Got some flowers in there. Again, this plant took a beating at the beginning of the year too. But it, uh, it came back. And I think it's going to be okay. I'm not a big cucumber fan, but I do plan on turning it into pickles. Got some activity going on here. And this is our seedless watermelon. More watermelon. Now these watermelon vines are finally there, just growing rapidly. See this one's coming up here over the top. And then look at this little beauty. Get a focus in there. There you go. Watermelon. We have several varieties, so again, until they start really showing their true colors, I can't tell which is which. I am learning as I go. More watermelon. And then we get to our winter squash. So remember I told you I wasn't really sure what these were. Look, let me see if I can get down in here. This pretty thing. Can you see that? So I've got some that are yellow and some that are coming on green. So finally I had to go find the seed packet because I just couldn't remember. So it turns out they are winter squash. So you should have a variety here between the white yellow stripes this one's pretty cool again I don't know which seeds exactly I put in here but uh, just the ornamental winter squash I've never eaten them before but I may look to see if they're edible then we get over to the zucchini plants we've got two nice ones here and a bunch of little ones forming there and over here, we've got our first one that is ready to be picked. The little guy got big in a matter of like three days. See a gap here. We did have two plants in here because again, like I said, we were just experimenting and seeing what would grow in these bags. But apparently with this zucchini, it was just a little more then this plant could handle and it started to wither all the zucchini that were coming off on it were withering right away and the leaves were looking sickly so at first we tried managing with just cutting some leaves off but the plant itself was just not it was thriving but it looked horrible and again the zucchini itself was withering so we cut it out give this plant a little more space a little more nutrients and a little more room to grow and we'll just focus on these two this one and this one, you know, thriving. We're gonna get more than enough zucchini as it is. Then we get over to my spaghetti squash, which I'm so, so excited about. They are just amazing. I think I showed you a picture from the bottom before, but you are not gonna believe how much this thing has grown. In fact, let me get to the bottom and I will show you. So here we are at the bottom, and here is my spaghetti squash. Last time, it seemed like hmm, the vine was about here. I'll see if I can find a picture from before, but now, ooh, look, the ground is just right there. So it has flourished. And in fact, it's so long that we're starting to get concerned that when these spaghetti squash start to get big and heavy, it's going to rip the vine or pull the vine. So tonight we plan on running some string like you saw from here over and allowing it to vine around it, uh, give it a little more support and not pull so much on the root ball itself as it starts 
getting some spaghetti squash because we do finally have spaghetti squash forming on it. Look at this little guy. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. Our first spaghetti squash. We got a few of them forming on here now, which is just so cool. Spaghetti squash is one of the most versatile vegetables, it seems. I've used it in a million different recipes. I love it stuffed like with taco seasoning and make it like a taco inside the spaghetti squash itself or even like chicken alfredo in the squash. Half it, cook it, put your alfredo sauce and chicken in there, toss it all together, put it back in the oven with some cheese on top, let it melt. Anyway, there's a million recipes on Pinterest for spaghetti squash so if you like it or if you never tried it and would like to check some of those out because it is really delicious and so good for us. Again you can see our tomato vines. Sorry that would be watermelon. <laughs> watermelon vines. Hey it's early here. Don't judge me. <laughs> Haven't had any caffeine yet. And we will put those on the ropes as well because we know those are going to get huge and heavy. We'll move around here. And again, here is the gourds. The gourds are doing a really great job, the bottle gourds, of just vining horizontally. I think all of those, um, the trellis there is going to hold it just fine. They are going to get pretty big, but they are so intertwined in and out, weaving through that wood that I don't think we're going to have to do anything extra, but we'll see as it grows. But you can see some tomatoes coming out. There over there is that loofah gourd, and you can see even the tops of the corn up there. So again, if you have small space, you can definitely have a thriving garden without much space. You've got a deck, you have a balcony, you have a little patio. Try it. See what will grow for you. You may just be surprised. But that is our update for this week. I'll do another garden update in the week to come. We have a few plans. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but when we do water, the bags themselves hold in the moisture. So we've got these little discs that we're going to put under them that will keep the water from damaging the deck itself. The whole deck needs to be restained and sealed anyway, but we don't want to damage it further. And then of course we're going to put up those ropes in order for these vines to trellis on. Uh, let's see what other projects do we have in the works. Uh, we've got to build nesting boxes for the chickens soon. And of course a million things to clear out on the property itself. When we just live on 10 acres and it's mostly wooded and not just wooded it's crazy filled with thorns and ivy and um, all the things you really don't want so we want to clear that out open it up and make it just a really beautiful park like setting so anyway if you uh, like this video please hit that like button hit subscribe if you haven't already so you can get updates for the new videos that will be coming we plan on making uh, many many videos about what's happening around on the farm uh, learning as we go because again this is all new for us and it has just been absolutely wonderful researching and improving the property so thanks for joining and I'll see you on the next one bye